Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday morning prayer and devotion. Thank you for being a part of prayer ministry again today. Um, I do want to mention at the outset here, uh, one of our unspoken needs was met uh, yesterday. Sister Judy reporting that Rebecca, uh, her prayer need was answered. So we give God praise for that. This morning, we do want to remember in prayer those who are in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. Uh, asking God to uh, move for them today, that they would be encouraged, strengthened, and would receive the quality care that they need today. Uh, also, let's remember our missionaries, our global missionaries, advancing the kingdom all across the globe today. Pray for favor in their uh, countries that they're ministering, <clears throat> excuse me, ministering in today. And uh, also for our North American missionaries, uh, pray for Brother and Sister Cluster, who are now in Missouri District, had their first service here last night as they are raising funds, getting partners and missions for the work in Philadelphia. Uh, let's pray for believers who are being persecuted today in uh, some countries around the world. And let's remember all the spiritual and family needs. I'm going to actually go through those and mention those. Uh, each need this morning. Uh, pray for Shirley battling suicidal thoughts. Uh, Belinda's best friend uh, remains in need of our prayers as she battles depression. Pray for Belinda's needs today. She has several uh, needs on our list currently, needing a new furnace, uh, waiting for her fall financial aid to come through. She has a family member causing her problems. Uh, she's been battling discouragement. Uh, so let's keep lifting Belinda up in our prayers today. Uh, pray for the Jones family um, and especially their older children who are away from the Lord currently. The Marlins, the Moores, um, the Williams, the Pulliams, Debbie Biddick's family, all needing our prayers today. Let's continue to lift up those who are battling addictions. Pray for Rose Brown's family needing salvation. Johnny Nelson's uh, family, uh, many nieces and nephews needing salvation. We're also praying for uh, David to return to God, praying for Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter, also praying for Cheney and Becca and Judy Johnson's grandson, each of these uh, needing to uh, come back to the Lord. Uh, praying for Charles Gossett, who needs chains of addiction broken from his life and several others uh, on this list with that uh, specific need today as well. Pray for our Mingo RCF residents. Today is my um, time with them as we go to home group uh, for them today at 3 o'clock. So be praying for um, God to move among our RCF residents, or I should say continue to move. Also pray for our Job Corps students, especially those who are currently on camp crews and fire crews out west and uh, be praying for our um, family revival this weekend. Uh, we invite everyone who can to attend and want to remind uh, those from our church to be inviting someone to be in the house of the Lord with you uh, this Sunday at 10 a.m. and 1045 for uh, our classes being taught by our evangelist and also Brother Smith will be preaching in our Sunday service. Um, health needs we need to pray for today. Let's remember all those who are dealing with various health situations. Um, Johnny Nelson, Devin Huff, George Tibbs, Judy Weaver's brother, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Robin Tibbs, Cheryl Ogden, Pat Wilson, Robbie, Kristen's friend, Ann, Randy Reeves, Venus, Clay, Matthew, Johnny's cousin Michael, Carl Metcalf, Eddie Potts, Lois Link, Sue Morris, Terry Nelson's sister Cindy, Laura Heppy, uh, Kristen's uncle Lonnie, all of these with various health needs. We do have some unspoken needs uh, to pray for today. Let's keep praying for Brianna, Judy Johnson's family, Johnny Nelson's mother, Johnny's brother Alan, also his niece Jessica, Venus's daughters and Belinda with some unspoken needs. I have a couple of unspoken 
uh, request today as well. So I cherish uh, your prayers this morning. We're praying traveling mercies for missionary Jerry McLean and Brother Matt traveling with him as they minister in Africa. Let's keep praying for our nation and our world, uh, praying for peace in Israel and in Ukraine, and also praying God's protection upon our service members today, wherever they are stationed around the world. Uh, let's pray for those on hospice care, um, those who have been hospitalized recently. Uh, pray for Melissa. This is Christian's friends. Uh, she's needing healing and a good prognosis. Betty Cossey with a thyroid cyst and two small nodules on the thyroid needing our continued prayers. Marsha's liver enzymes need to go down. Uh, Jolie um, was in a serious car accident and broke her back in three places and had other major injuries. She's facing several surgeries and a long road of recovery. Uh, Cheryl Chance is in urgent need of healing. Uh, several children we've been praying for, Abel, Abram, Tammy Lawson's granddaughter, Darla's granddaughter, Elsie, Brantley, Jaden, and Weston. Uh, also praying for continued recovery for those who have suffered stroke and other types of, of major health situations that have been long-term and recovery has been slow for them. They need strength each day to go through therapy and to recover completely. Uh, pray for those facing upcoming surgeries. Tomorrow, Amanda Rogers is having cancer surgery. Let's lift her up in our prayers. Cheryl Chance's family member preparing for another surgery uh, for blood clots in her stomach. Um, had successful surgery a few, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I believe, for uh, her heart. And so let's continue to pray for this upcoming surgery. Anthony Williams having gastric bypass surgery September 23rd. Linda's cousin also facing an upcoming surgery. We're praying for all those who are recovering from surgery that they will have quick recovery, full recovery quickly, um, and be restored to full health. Let's lift up those who are battling cancer um, as well, those uh, with back pain, arthritis pain, mobility issues, we have some who suffer chronically from migraine headaches. Let's continue to pray for them, those suffering with dementia, and those with that are their caregivers also need our prayers um, as they deal with disheartening situations each and every day as they care for their loved ones. Uh, believe for healing with me for those with Parkinson's disease, stomach problems, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, heart issues, uh, lung issues, and respiratory problems of a chronic nature, kidney issues, liver problems. Uh, let's keep praying for Sherry needing a liver transplant. Olivia needs a kidney transplant. And so many others who are dealing with issues with dialysis and uh, different problems uh, brought on by organ failure. You know, just thinking of my own personal um, struggle with diabetes, there's just so many things that are connected to one particular organ. So when your pancreas doesn't function properly, uh, it causes struggles in other areas. And this is um, even more so with some of these other organs, kidneys and liver and, and the heart. Um, when you have one problem, the entire body begins to suffer in different ways. So we need God's healing touch this morning for so many. And we're going to lift those needs up to the Lord in prayer together here in just a few moments. I do want to take a moment and welcome you who are joining us live this morning. Thank God for each of you today. Um, I'm looking for the feed here right now, and I trust that we are on the air. I see that we're live, but I don't see the, um, the specific feed here this morning. So I'm going to try to find it, if you'll bear with me just a moment here. There we are. All right. Good morning to you. Mom and Dad with us this morning. Belinda, Sherman, Kristen, Terry, Judy, Johnny, Pam, Carmen. What a great group of prayer warriors uh, meeting together this morning. Thank you for being here. 
We'll go ahead and post your request this morning. If you have updates, praise reports, or additional prayer requests, this is a great time uh, to post those as most of the team is watching now or will be looking at this very soon as they start their day as well. Let's go to the word of the Lord today. I want to read to you from Exodus chapter 34, reading verses 6 and 7. It says, And the Lord passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. I just read that from the NIV today. Uh, we've been examining some attributes of God and we can uh, find countless more throughout scripture. But in Exodus chapter 34, uh, God reveals here specific things about himself to Moses, that he is compassionate, he is gracious, he is slow to anger. I'm personally so thankful for the long suffering nature of God. He is loving and he is, as I say over and over again, he is faithful. In this same passage, God tells Moses, that he also does not allow the guilty to go unpunished. This seems like a jarring shift. Uh, God wants his people to know that he's loving and faithful and slow to anger, but also he will punish those who have it coming. How do we reconcile that tension of God's justice and his love? For starters, we must understand that God transcends all the boxes that we try to put him in. He is not only loving, he is also just, which is why he cannot allow the guilty to go unpunished. And yet, he is merciful at the same time, meaning that while he punishes a few generations, he shows love to thousands of them. God's love and his justice are both on display throughout Scripture, and they are both huge components of his faithfulness. God's grand plans to restore a relationship with him began with a promise. A promise he makes to Abraham and Sarah in Genesis. He says that he will bless the world through their descendants. And actually, if you go back even further, and, and that promise was given to Adam and Eve that uh, through their seed that there would be a deliverer that would come that would uh, bruise or crush the head of the serpent. And this promise to Adam and Eve, this promise reiterated to Abraham and Sarah and reiterated down through time was ultimately fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. But we predictably continue to disregard our side of the bargain. As Moses is speaking with God here in this passage, the rest of the people had grown impatient and already decided to worship a golden statue instead of the living God. And yet because of his faithfulness to his promises, God did not destroy them. Instead, uh, he gives space to repent. Those who continue to disobey him and walk away from him, they will receive punishment. But those who repent, God always gives another chance. We can find no inconsistency in the character of God. He will show mercy and he will bring judgment. Whatever is needed, he will dispense. When we look at all the failures of humanity, we can see that God's faithfulness remains. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promise. He's faithful to the promise that if we do all these commandments, that his blessings will be upon us. And then the other side of that coin is also just as true, that he will be faithful uh, to enact the curse upon those who disregard his will for their lives. So I want to just encourage you this morning uh, to stand upon the faithfulness of God and to uh, understand that when we mess up or when we miss the mark again, the important thing is that we do come running back to God. He will show mercy. 
But if we do not stay close to him and we continue to walk away from him, there will be a day of reckoning coming because God is just as faithful in his promise of judgment as he is in his promise of mercy. Amen. Lord, we thank you today that you are faithful. We know without your faithfulness, there would be nothing but chaos in our world. And when it seems like that our world is descending into chaos, we can depend upon your faithfulness to ultimately right every wrong. And we give you the praise and the glory, however and whenever you choose to act. We know, God, you will have first exhausted all mercy before you judge. And you will have exhausted every opportunity, Lord, to draw someone back to you. We pray today that in this season of grace that we have, God, this dispensation that's been going on now for over 2,000 years that we are blessed to be a part of. We pray, God, that you would help us to bring more people in, Lord, that they would not be judged at your coming. We give you praise, Lord, for this special relationship that you have allowed us to have with you. And today we're challenged by your word, Lord, uh, to remember your faithfulness and to serve you with our whole hearts. Help us to grow in our faith and in the process today of all the things that you desire to do in our lives. We lift you up today. We glorify you. We praise you, Lord, for who you are. And we give this day to you. We recommit today, Lord, to serve you with everything that we have. Let us give our best effort today, Lord, for your work. Help me, God, to be the Christian that I need to be today, to be the example for others that I need to be today. Lord, that they would be drawn to you, that they would be uh, reminded of your goodness, of your faithfulness when they see what you've done in our lives today. We pray now you would meet every need, Lord, this long list of needs today. None of these needs has have escaped your attention. You know about every situation. You know about every health need today. You know about each one who's facing uh, chronic health issues today. Those who need strength to continue to recover, who have been dealing with affliction in their bodies for quite some time right now, Lord, but you are able today. In a moment, God, you can reverse the situation. Help us not to lose heart. Help us, God, to keep sowing good seed and knowing that we're going to reap if we faint not. If we'll be faithful, we will reap the rewards of your faithfulness. Have your way today, God. Move, Lord, in the unspoken needs. Move today, God, in the spiritual needs and the family situations. For those that are suffering right now emotionally, those battling mental health issues right now, we proclaim your healing for them. Lord, those with cancer today, those facing surgery, uh, even tomorrow, we lift up Sister Amanda and these others who will be uh, having surgery in the near future, but Amanda having surgery tomorrow, God, to remove cancer. And we believe, God, for complete healing and a cancer-free declaration for her soon after this surgery. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for those uh, who have financial needs today, that you would move in their behalf. Hallelujah. You are able, God. You are able. We give all these things to you. Hallelujah. We trust you today. We trust you with every need, with every circumstance, with every situation. Hallelujah. Lord, those uh, uh, who are under intense stress right now, we pray, God, that there would be relief for them. We pray, God, that there would be comfort for those who have suffered loss in recent days, those who's Faith is being tested right now. God, we pray that a spirit of encouragement would just be upon them today. That they could endure hardness as good soldiers, as your word has commanded us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way, God. The needs that are being posted this morning, you care about those things. You care about every situation, whether we can vocalize the details and share them with others or not. Lord, you know all about it. We give these things to you today. We thank you for every answered prayer, and we glorify your name this morning. We pray your blessing, Lord, upon this day for each of our prayer team, for those in their circles of influence today. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come today. It all belongs to you. The power is yours. The glory is yours. It's your kingdom that we 
serve in today. We know that you're in control. And for this, we give you thanks and all praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless your prayer team. Let's join together again tomorrow morning. We have one more uh, prayer session tomorrow, and I look forward to praying with you. Uh, please join me right here on Facebook at 7.45 a.m. tomorrow, and uh, we will enjoy one more time of prayer and devotion again this week. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please remember to intercede on behalf of Puxico, specifically our revival this weekend. And we believe that God's going to do great things. I'll see you tomorrow, 7.45 a.m. God bless you.